Hey everyone, Pratik here, back again with another video. So this is a really special episode. Today I'll be talking to Osgur. Osgur is a Turkey-based web application security researcher and a great bug bounty hunter. He is ranking top on the Synac and two times SRT Grand Champion in a row. And he is also a Synac Envoy. So as a security researcher, I truly admire his work and I am obliged to have him with us today. But first, let's roll the intro. So thank you so much for taking time out and joining me on my channel. I am very honored to have you as my guest. So, thank you too. So Osgur, my first question is, can you please tell us a bit about yourself and your quick recap about your journey in Bug Bounty? Yeah, sure. Uh, I have seven years of experience in the offensive security area, starting from 2013. Uh, when I graduated from the college, uh, I got a job in Deloitte, Turkey, uh, as a position in the junior penetration tester uh, in one of the offensive security team in the Turkey. Uh, and afterwards, I worked like three and a half years in there and have the chance that like lots of uh, testing, penetration testing and finding uh, critical vulnerabilities. Uh, most of the uh, tur Turkish systems, like the banking systems, e-commercial systems, uh, etc. Uh, afterwards, uh, I was working really hard in the Deloitte. The, the big for the consulting companies are really famous with, with the, like the long working cars. While it is actually really good uh, chance in the first starting of your career because you are gaining lots of experience in your first years within that workload and also uh, lots of good responsibilities. Uh, after a few years, uh, the pe person starts to a little bit uh, get tired about uh, because of the, these long working hours. So afterwards, I started to looking uh, another job and quitted my job from the Deloitte. So I take uh, like two months for just me and uh, just take a vac vacation and stay home uh, and take my time off. Uh, after one month, uh, I was starting to apply to some uh, other companies. But in the meanwhile, I actually uh, start joined the Snack Red team uh, and uh, I was just uh, th thinking about maybe I can do on my uh, free time after getting in a job. Uh, however, I get bored uh, after one month staying in the home. And uh, I just said, okay, let's do some look into the ta targets in the snake system. So th this was my actually first day starting in the bug bounties. Of course, I looked into the some uh, programs like two years ago in the hacker one and the bug crowd, but I didn't have lots of time due to I work really hard in the Deloitte. So uh, after that, I started looking at vulnerabilities in the Snack platform. And after three days, I find a wallet vulnerability, wallet, wallet uh, report. Uh, my first report was insecure object direct reference uh, on a, of course, confidential target, but uh, it was like 500 and, uh, $70 uh, okay. for, for yeah one report. And I was really surprised and it was a real nice feeling. Afterwards, uh, for like two, two weeks, I did that job on full time. Uh, and I see that like maybe five or six reports I got accepted. And uh, the bounty was over 2,000 bucks. So I calcul cal calculated a little bit and I said that why not just continue this for a while and uh, just skip to the job interviews. And uh, I com conducted it like three more months. And after three months, I just calculated for my potential salaries getting into the job and also okay. compared it with the bug bounty money and see that like, I already get at least one year of my salary if I work anywhere in the Turkey. So I just said that, okay, let's continue with the bug bounty. So like for the last four years, I am a full-time bug hunter right now. Okay. So I actually see your profile and I know you have some kind of teaching experience also. 
in the universities of Tokyo. So, yeah. how was your experience to teaching the people about web application security research? It was actually a really good experience. Teaching uh, anyone to anything is actually really feels really well and motivated uh, because you are just uh, touching people's lives. Uh, uh, like I, on every semester, I had four, like 40 to 50 students per semester, uh, per year actually, not the semester. Okay. Uh, maybe just five or 10 of them are successful. However, uh, no matter what, maybe just one person being successful just because of you is actually an amazing feeling. And my next question is, how do you balance your time and what hobbies do you have? Uh, how do I balance time? Since I am doing uh, this uh, bug bounty as a full-time job, I am actually just looking and behaving it like a real job. So in the Deloitte, I was working from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. within one hour lunch uh, in the like eight hours working life. Yeah, eight yeah, hours. Eight hours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When I first started in the uh, full-time bug bounty, I was working in the weekdays eight hours and I was not working either in the night or evening or in the weekends too. So I was just behaving like a it's a normal job. However, right now I'm not working for full eight hours, but uh, I, I decreased it a little bit to the six hours because like after four years of full-time bug hunting experience, you, you, it is more easy to find bugs rather okay. than comparing me to the four years ago. So uh, I just decreased one to two hours. I am working like five to six hours per day right now. So my next question is related to Recon. So what is your Recon methodology and what automation you use for your Recon? Uh, I think in the bug bounties, uh, the automation is a little bit overrated from my experience. I'm not uh, underestimating it. Of course, a lot of really good bug bounty hunters exist uh, in the world, just finding lots of bugs within the full kind of automation and I really respect that. However, uh, I really use really uh, less recon when I am okay. doing uh, bug bouncing, finding vulnerabilities. I am just testing man manually in the targets, mostly in the web applications rather than using fully automated tools. Okay. So what you look for the bugs when you get a target or an API endpoint? So what bugs you look when you have the API target or a website? Actually, my uh, methodology, my approach is a little bit uh, different than your question. Uh, instead of looking different categories of the bugs, okay. I am fo more focusing to finding bugs on this endpoint. So let's imagine uh, I am working on an endpoint. Uh, I am not looking for an application like, let's find uh, cross-site scripting vulnerabilities on these applications, but I am looking at the endpoints and the all parameters one by one to check what kind of category of the bugs may exist in there. So I'm not specifically looking for any kind of bug, but trying to find all kinds of bugs in an okay. App application. Okay, so you have some kind of function-wise methodology you are following. I think so. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's that's really great. So what burp extension do you use? Um, in terms of burp extensions, I'm not actually using too many different kind of uh, burp extensions like uh, but however recently like one or two months ago I uh, started to use burp bounty uh, one of yeah. the uh, it's re it's it's a really flexible extension actually. By the way, I am not using its like the smart scan or uh, I am just using a few profiles on it. However, actually the tool is really flexible and you can create your own profiles. So I started to a little bit automating my manual uh, tests within the burp bounty for within creating my own profiles. Okay. So it's a really good uh, extension that I can suggest. Okay. So the next question is how you hunt for JS files? For JavaScripts? Yeah. 
JavaScript files. Uh, yeah, yeah. So I actually read the JavaScript files <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Man manually. Looking for different kind of uh, endpoints uh, in the JS files are really good for the, for example, uh, access violation bugs or okay. uh, for for the uh, DOM based document object model based uh, XSS bugs. Okay. It is really uh, good good to analyze manually uh, because automatic scanners really uh, misses a lot of the, the dom based vulnerabilities <laughs> also okay yeah th that's main need okay so my next question is suppose you have a lots of subdomain and some open ports on them so which ports you use locally look for to start with and what are the good ports to looking for the pen tester wise i actually main focus like uh, Really common misconfigs can be found by uh, automatic scanners, such okay. as like the Nessus or the maybe Acunetics, etc. Especially in the host systems, Nessus okay. and Coalis are really good to okay. find like the misconfigurations or outdated systems, like the vulnerable softwares, etc. So instead of them, I mainly focus to uh, HTTP and HTTPS ports uh, all the time to find out, find out the custom vulnerabilities. Uh, for the host systems, I am looking mostly authentication bypass vulnerabilities, access control vulnerabilities, okay. sensitive information disclosures, and uh, SQL injections, also sometimes in RCs. And uh, for, for the, uh, the web targets, uh, I am just like, I analyze all subdomains one by one. I am not just picking a subdomain and focusing on that. If I am testing a company and if that company like has 100 subdomains, uh, I spend equal time to all subdomains to check wh whether they can be vulnerable or not. Okay. So my next question is, how did you hear about a Synac? Uh, actually, uh, I was looking for a remote job uh, okay. When I was working in the Deloitte, uh, I was planning to do work from the home. That that's when I discovered it from a like a, a job application was uh, in the. I just searched from the Google and I see that it's both flexible and also like it was one of the first time that I met with the bug bounties also. Okay. So my next question is, what do you like about the Synac Red Team and SRT levels? Uh, what I like actually mostly for the in the Cinec, like uh, for example, in the hacker one, there are two kind of different uh, targets exist, such as like the programs managed by the hacker one traders, hacker one. and yeah, and also the uh, pro pro programs managed by the customers they are on. So when you are reporting some uh, vulnerabilities. It is not actually too stable, like because different tra trash teams are uh, trashing the reports. However, in the SNAC, there are there is just one vulnerable to operations team. The trash team exists, and if you report one kind of vulnerability, and if it is accepted, it is accepted all the time. Uh, for example, the Google Maps APK that uh, I blocked and also developed a tool about is. Like when I first uh, reported on the hacker one programs, for example, I reported 20 different program, 10 is accepted and 10 is not accepted. Not accepted. Yeah, however, in the SNAC, 20, if I report 20, 20 is all the accepted. Yeah. Uh, also, the payouts, like recently, I get a bounty from hacker one. Uh, we, which is like reported from two years ago. <laughs> so, oh. uh, you are reporting an issue and getting paid uh, like two, two years later. If you are doing this job full time, of course, you need to pay your bills. Uh, if you, you need just like planning your life is easier. Like if you paid, get more faster. And uh, in Sinek, you are paid for a buck at least after one week and this this the it was actually like one or two days in the history uh, however like the big report queues happen uh, a lot recently because of the like the covid issues so yeah. but it was like one week at most which is actually really great okay 
So that's the main thing I also like about the Synax so that payout will be getting on your almost twenty four to forty eight hours. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So my next question is: You are are the part of the most of the hackers hangout at Synax. So how was your experience with other hackers? And I think uh, you met Nikhil also, Nikhil Srivastava. So. Yeah. Yeah. So how was yeah. your experience yeah. with all of the hackers? Yeah, we we meet Nikhil with uh, Bali in the second hacker hangout. Uh, the first one is in the Mexico. We were three uh, security researchers in there, and also we go to the Costa Rica. Uh, it was actually really awesome to uh, talk about, uh, like, the talk about the snake or also the uh, other platforms. Uh, we are actually both have similar minded people and also have different approaches. Okay. So sharing these different approaches together and working the targets together, uh, different targets and talking about them was just really amazing, actually. Okay. So my next question is: How do you sharpen your skills, and what set of skills are you looking to sharpen within the next six months? I sharpen my skills looking uh, and working for more different targets because okay. every target has a different technology. Every target is developed by. Uh, I, I am uh, may referring to the web applications mostly. Like every different web application is developed by different software engineer. So okay. uh, for sharpening skills, actually, instead of focusing like the vulnerability category, such as like finding uh, just cross-site scriptings, analyzing the different applications within just different methodologies is really good for finding different kind of vulnerabilities uh, and for the next six months i am actually not really good the the best in the uh, mobile uh, source code analysis so i am uh, planning to do work on that area too in the next six months that's great okay so my next question is what do you think the easiest vulnerability are to find for that target type It actually really differs from target to target. <laughs> actually, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, for example, uh, uh, SQL injection vulnerabilities are not easy to find, of course, uh, because they, they are not too common. But uh, most of the time, the uh, XSS or CSRF vulnerabilities are easy to find. Easy to however, uh, yeah. However, um, it really depends on the target. For example. Sometimes one target is really vulnerable to the XSS attacks, but not vulnerable to the any attack of, of type oh. S. However, uh, the other type is really good in the input and output validation. However, really sucks and access control management, for example. So it really depends from target to target. Uh, the next question is: Any idea how to change the mentality of this? The application is already tested by a lot of professional hackers. So most of the hackers are don't like. If I go to the any target and I see the analytics, oh my God, SQL authentication bypass, and all the vulnerabilities are already to find. So, how we can change our mindset? Actually, for the long term projects, long term targets, uh, the applications are uh, like updated maybe every week or every month. Okay. And uh, for example, if I test an application today, and if you test that application. One month later, you will test a completely, maybe not the completely, but partially different kind of application because okay. uh, applications are developed and updated uh, from time to time. Okay. So, uh, if you test an old target, that there is a really high chance to find vulnerabilities within new updated sections all the time. Uh, you know the blitz periods in the snack, like they are applying these blitzes. To the old targets, the bond, the, the bond is the incentives. And uh, whenever I look at old targets, which I tested before myself, sorry, uh, I find new vulnerabilities all the time. I can't find it. So no, no matter what, what do you think? Uh, if I test an application again, like six months later, I can find different kind of vulnerabilities. Okay, that's my need. Great answer. So okay. So my next question is: What is the best things you have purchased with your bug bounty money? Uh, I bought a house, and also I bought a car, <laughs> and uh, also. Can I'm you sorry? please tell? 
can you please tell us which car you have bought from your bug bounty money <laughs> okay yes yeah, since i am doing full time okay. bug bounty it's not like a bug bounty money it's also like kind of my salary so okay. as you can imagine because i am doing it full time uh, i bought a volvo uh, oh. like yeah v40 uh, and i bought a house like a in the in the forest which is which has a really good view and also within a good garden like a, a, a like a villa with within its own pool and jacuzzi <laughs> but yeah that, that's mainly it but, oh, but of course i am doing this like four years so uh, it's like a salary to me right now yeah okay so my next question is what is the best swags you got till now best swags <laughs> Uh, best swags actually i mainly got uh, nearly all the swags from snack <laughs> i actually re really enjoyed the oculus quest the okay. vr technology the, yeah. the, sign, the glasses also i got a drone which was really yeah. ni nice to have too uh, however uh, i really like uh, all, all the t-shirts that i have from snack or like I have. I really like my stickers too. <laughs> I, I really like all the swags that I have. So, can you please tell us the best resources for the bug bounty hunters who just started the entering into bug bounty? Uh, of course, the best resource is Google because it has like <laughs> everything on it. Okay. Uh, however, if you are starting like for the web applications. The uh, Burp Suite Academy is really good to okay. start with, uh, as far as I see. Uh, actually, uh, the for the bug bounty, you need to find vulnerabilities, right? For the yeah. fi finding the vulnerabilities, you need to know the systems how okay. is working both on in the front end and also in the back end. So, okay. for example, if you want to focus in the web applications, you need to know how the web application works. So okay. you need to both think like a web developer, how what kind of mis mistakes you can do in the backend, and also you need to think like an attacker, like what kind of vulnerabilities one application have and which can be misused. Okay. So mainly not just focusing like the guidelines, the walkthroughs, the block size. Okay, they, these are nice to read and have. Uh, read and also look look inside of course there are really good resources exist in the web however like understanding the technology behind okay. what you are going to test is one of the essential thing to do so my next question is uh, best certification if you suggest if that if anyone wants to coming in the bug bounty can you please suggest some best certification that skills help yeah, in sure. bug bounty yeah in terms of certifications actually i really like oscp because uh, uh, actually when after i passed the uh, offensive security certificate professional exam uh, it really uh, supplied a mentality to me like how to research for a vulnerability how to find out, out the targets it's a really good exam it it really it's not about like the full bug bounty hunting however the mentality it's supplying is really good okay okay guys so that's it for today i would like to thank oscar for taking some time and making a really good video uh, our part of the synac envoy program and i hope you guys also enjoy it and gaining some knowledge uh, from this video so guys if you like this video press the like button and if you're new on this channel make sure guys you press the subscribe button and osgur osgur is also write some blogs on medium so make sure guys you following the following home twitter and medium the link is also displaying in the i button and the screen so this is pratik davi over and out